everyone, welcome back to another 668 building video. As you can see, I finished printing the other half of the keyboard. And this time I printed it with a brim and there was basically no warping whatsoever. And the bottom is basically completely flat. Right, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, there's still some residue from the brim on the edges, so I might sand that down later on. As for how it fits with the rest of the keyboard, um, since the top layer of the other side warped, I think I'm probably not going to use a dowel to connect to these two here, since it seems like it's just not going to fit. Everything else should link up pretty well though. So we'll do that later on in this video. For now, I'm going to install all of the key switches now into this frame. Alright, so we finished installing all of the key switches. Installing CoStar stabilizers on the 668 seems like it's different from other keyboard videos that I've seen because on most of the other videos, the wire is facing towards the bottom of the keyboard. So it would be in this position. However, on the 668, maybe because of how the slots are located, if you do this, the wire will actually get stuck on the key switch. This could also be because of how my wire is shaped specifically. So my wire is shaped like this and that might also be the reason why. But in any case, no matter how you install the um, stabilizer, which direction, the procedure should be basically the same. So to, do, to install the stabilizers, I will just take the insert. I don't think this is actually called the insert. I forgot what this is called. We can take the end that where the wire will hook in and then insert it facing upwards. So we'll do the backspace key. And do that for both of the slots. So I find that it's really hard to remove the stabilizers once you put them in on this keyboard. So make sure you get the orientation right. Otherwise you might have a hard time. Okay, and then uh, you should now fit the wire into the slots now. So turn the keyboard around for this actually. And I'll bring it up here. This is not a great angle, but there, there are these hooks where you can hook the wire on. You just kind of got to put it in. I guess it helps if you have something that can like pull the wire in. I'm just using my fingernails to press it in however and it seems like that might work. So I guess it helps if you only do one end of the wire at a time, so we, we manage to get it in. Okay, so for some reason the wire was still getting stuck on the key switch when I inserted the stabilizer backwards. But when I inserted it the right way in, um, this time now it works. What I had to do instead was flip the direction of the switch. So notice how the gap on this one is on now facing towards the bottom, which makes me wonder if I act actually inserted all of my switches in the wrong direction. Since 
on the other half of the keyboard, I was just playing around with the shift stabilizer as well. And I also had to turn the switch the other direction in order to get the stabilizer to go on correctly. I guess it's not really that big of an issue, but um, for all of the stabilized keys, I guess I'll have to just switch all the key switches around into the other direction now. And hopefully that doesn't cause too much of a problem when wiring. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> okay, and then for the rest of the stabilizer, I found that the easiest way for me was to actually insert the... I think these are called the inserts. Um, so to insert these into the keycap first. Okay, so there is a long edge of the insert and that should be facing up in that direction. So um, we'll insert both into the slots on the keycap. And then I insert one of the inserts onto the wire first. Okay, and then I get the other one on by uh, pulling the key slightly. Alright, and then you can just line it up and push down. Alright, now you have a stabilized key now. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it is kind of rattly. I guess the rattle is fine for now. I don't really care that much. This isn't really a high-end keyboard. All right, so I'm gonna install the rest of the, or the other stabilizer right now. Great, so I also got the enter key stabilizer on now. And here's a quick sound test. Still kind of a rattling noise, but it's not it's not that big of an issue for me at least. So now I'm going to connect up the two halves of the keyboard. And we're gonna do that with these dowels that I printed as well. And for these I also printed them with a brim because when I tried it without a brim, I think they all rolled around on the printing bed and messed everything up. So Printing it with a brim actually made the print finish. I'm gonna take these out of the brim right now. These are also definitely a lot smaller than I expected. Compared to my finger, this is how large it is. All right, so I got the most of the stuff off of the dowels. There's still a bit of residue left, but I don't think it's that important. So we're going to connect up the bottom first. Let's move these out of the way. I think the way to do this is to just take one of these and try to shove it in. Get something it in with here's an eraser. It's pretty satisfying actually. <laughs> here's the other one. Okay there we go. That actually took quite a lot of force and removing more of the residue actually helped. So it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> and I think to connect these we'll just try to push them together. Okay, that was actually kind of difficult, but we managed to get the two boards connected together. Um, what I ended up doing was like holding them vertically and taking a heavy object and like hammering the two pieces together. Um, yeah, so it's quite a lot of force required, actually. <laughs> So now I'll try to do the next two pieces. And the dowel is definitely not going to fit into this hole right here. So I think we can get away with just inserting a dowel into one of these since the two pieces will be held together using screws 
on these holes anyway. So I don't think it will be that big of a deal. Okay, I, I had a lot of trouble getting the dowel into the left side, but it like just slides in and out of the right side. I guess I'll try to just link these two up now. This might be kind of difficult. <laughs> Alright, so we finally got the whole keyboard together. I think the last thing for this video is I'm going to install the spacebar stabilizers and put on the spacebar. So that should be pretty fun. That's the same process as the other stabilizers basically, I'm assuming. Oh, so that means I also have to flip this switch around to the other, to face the other way. Oh, and to get a sense of like how badly the first piece was warped, these two edges aren't even lined up correctly. So if I were to remake this project, I'd probably do a better job with printing these pieces because this top left corner isn't that great. Top left half, I mean. Some people turn the space bar upside down. I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I don't know, I might change my line. I might change my mind later. So now the space bar is on. It was like a sound test again. This is really nice. Great, so thank you for watching. That's all for this video. We'll probably start wiring next time. I don't know if that's something we can finish in one video since there's a lot to do, but we'll see. All right. Take care, see you next time.